God's house tonight. Good to see each of you. Um, hope you've had a good day. Maybe possibly got a few minutes of rest this day, today during the afternoon. But anyway, it's good to be here today. Brother Ricky, how about if you'd pray for us, please, brother? Amen, amen. All right, y'all, uh, you know the announcements as far as that goes. Now, y'all help me remember, one of us, somebody, to put the red can out by the road, only one's got trash in it. Boy, that's really important stuff to be on live stream and all, isn't it? But I told, I asked a couple of guys this morning, and then I'd forgotten all, but it's hard to remember the new pickup date, but it's Monday's now. Whether they'll pick up tomorrow being a holiday, I don't know, but it'll be out there Tuesday. If it gets out there tomorrow, it, it, it probably won't roll back on its own. <laughs> but, but uh, anyway, and then one other real important uh, thing that's got to do with this with us this week is Tuesday, somebody's having a birthday. He's going to be turning 53 years old. Isn't that, isn't that how old you are, brother? <laughs> okay, okay, 57, 58, something like that. Let's sing happy birthday, Brother Scott. We'll make, let's make sure, okay, and Sister Bonnie will sing it to her, too. She may be watching on live stream as well. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you and many more. Amen. All right, y'all. Well, come on, lead us in another good song, brother. Let's turn to page 474. I'd rather have Jesus.
this way I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world affords today He's fairer than lilies a prayer and bloom He is sweeter than page 459 459 like the woman at the well I was seeking for things that could not satisfy and then I heard my Savior speaking from a well that never shall run dry fill my cup Lord I lift it up Lord come and quench this thirsting of my soul bread of heaven feed me till I walk Make me whole. There are millions in this world that aren't craving the pleasures earthly things afford, but none can match the wondrous treasures that I find in Jesus Christ, my Lord. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord, come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I won't no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me whole. So my brother, if the things this world gave you, Leave hunger that won't pass away. My blessed Lord will come and save you if you kneel to Him and humbly pray. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of Hey, well, let's do this. Let's let's take a, just a minute. I'll, I'll lead it, brother. You can go sit up. You can go sit And uh, let's just take a couple of requests just from the hymnal, and I'll just two or three songs. Let's sing a couple of uh, songs. Let's just sing a little bit extra tonight. Y'all want to do that? Oh, I'll give you some good news. Uh, I appreciate everybody's spirit about that with Brother Ronnie this morning, Brother Ronnie Altry, but somewhere close to around $1,600 has already come in. So praise the Lord, man. I, I know he'll be thrilled. To, I'll call him in a little while, and I don't know what the time difference is between us and him down there. I better investigate that. Huh? Wake him up. Wake him up. Yeah, he'd probably, he'd probably love to wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and hear that, wouldn't he? <laughs> Amen. But uh, I know he'll be thrilled and all, so if you want to continue, I mean, we're still going to. You got about 
an hour to, to, to add to that if, if the Lord leads you to do so. But I, I was thrilled to find that out today. And amen. Praise the Lord. Can't outgive God. And I believe missions is God's heartbeat. And Lord, Lord bless it. Lord bless the church for forgiving and being faithful in that. All right. Anybody got a favorite song? Uh, wait a minute. Wow now. Okay, maybe y'all need to uh, get up. I mean, you stand over, you stand over there, and y'all race and go around the first one back. <laughs> with, <laughs> okay, all right, Miss Betty. <laughs> yeah, she forgot what we were talking about. <laughs> 297, okay. Amen. Are you washed in the blood? Let's sing the first, second, and last. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? On the fourth, lay aside the garments that are stained with sin, and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? All right, let's do this. Third verse. Let's go back and sing the poor third verse he got left out. I, I could tell he was lonely. But let's go back and sing the third verse. When we get to the chorus, all right, so are you washed? Now all the men do the bottom part. Are you washed? Are you washed? In the blood, in the blood. So all the men, let's sing out real good and do that little bottom part there. When the bridegroom cometh, will your robes be white? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for the mansion's bright and be washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? Are you washed? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Oops, I missed the of the Lamb, didn't I? Hey, man, Miss Jimmy, what number? 627. 627. Sandra said she knew that. <laughs> now, how did you ask Miss Sandra from up there? <laughs> She's not telling. That's one of our favorites. For the child of God, it is a wonderful truth, isn't it? Yeah. All right, y'all stand up. If you can, let's stand. There is coming a day when the heartache shall come. No more clouds in the sky. No more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look upon his face the one who saved me by his grace 
when he takes me through the hand and leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. There'll be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no pain, no more parting over there. And forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, wonderful day that will be. What a day, glorious day that will be. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. Three or four songs would have been fine, but I think we all just leave it right there. It's good. Oh, Sandra said, oh, get through her arm a little bit. It's a good thing we, good time to leave it to it. Leave it. Can we do 13? What is 13? Bow the knee. Huh? Bow the knee. Um, let's do it with acapella. She just grabbed her arm and said, and, uh, so let's, let's, if we can do it acapella if y'all want to. And I said that like I'm Bryant. <laughs> All right, page 13. Y'all got to sing out now. What a privilege to come into God's presence Just to linger with the one who set me free As I lift my eyes and see his awesome glory I remember who he is and bow the knee Bow the knee, bow the knee he is king of all the ages, bow the knee. God, God alone on his throne. See him high and lifted up and bow the knee. Kneel before him, all adore him. As you live to love him more, bow the knee. In his hand he holds the power of creation. With his voice he spoke and all things came to me. Yet the here's the simple prayer I bring before him. When I humbly seek his face and bow the knee. Bow the knee, bow the knee. He is king of all the ages, bow the knee. God alone on his throne. See him high and lifted up and bow the knee. Kneel before him, all adore him. As you live to love him more, bow the knee. Amen. Amen. All right. First John chapter three. All right, going back to that text from this morning. How was Children's Church this morning? Good, good. So everything but it's Peacock kids, right? Hey. 
De... <laughs> Amen. All right. First John chapter three. Uh, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Uh, we started off on this morning and talking about the sons of God and the difference that uh, there ought to be in the child of God. And the, we're just uh, set apart and we're different, and different in a good way. And, uh, but let's just continue on this, this evening on the sons of God here. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the day. Thank you for the, uh, Lord, the liberty we have to come in, Lord, in your house. And God, that we could sing tonight, lift up our voices, Lord, to praise you and, and Lord, the liberty to sing extra songs, Lord, that we're not on a clock, we're not on a uh, set schedule that has to be, but God, our purpose is to be here to worship you and to be, Lord, that we'd be edified, that we'd be strengthened, encouraged, and challenged to go out into a lost and dying world, and Lord, that the gospel might be preached, Lord, here and beyond. Lord, if there's one here tonight lost, I pray that you'd work in their heart. But God, I pray that we'd all be strengthened and encouraged, Lord, and reminded that we're peculiar people according to your word. God, help us tonight. Lord, help me to preach truth. Lord, I pray that you'd be with those that are listening via live stream. Lord, and I pray that you'd be with those that's not able to be here tonight and some that's been sick and some that are uh, not able to come to church that are... Uh, for the most part, in their homes, but Lord, that are able to listen. And Lord, be with those that's not able to. But God, help us tonight. We love you. Thank you for all. Thank you for loving us first. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, just continuing on, looking back real quickly for those that weren't in here uh, this morning. We're Talked about the sons of God, just a real quick review. Talked about in the, in the Bible, sons of God could mean different things depending on where you're at. And, and a lot of time in the Old Testament, is a reference to angels. And, uh, they're, they're, but in, in this part, no, make no mistake about it. And, you know, in, for, in John chapter 1, verse 12, I think it is, where it talks about those believers on him, but then they gave him power to become the sons of God. And, and uh, we know we're, we're children, God's children, because we've believed on him and our sins are paid for. And, Romans 8, 14, for as many are led by the Spirit, by the, led by the Spirit of God, it, says, and it goes on and says these are the sons of God, and that title given here. But we see that, and then the, the, I don't want to say the controversy is brought up there, and behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, because of that, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. And there's a, there's a separation between the child of God and this world. They don't understand us. Uh, and I'll be quite honest with you, I don't understand them. I do understand how they may look and see things and all and, and understand looking at it from a world point of view rather than a biblical world point of view. Uh, they see things as the here and now and, uh, and uh, ceasing to exist one day and uh, uh, get all you can and you know, live life just like a bunch of squirrels do. Just climb down the tree, get all the nuts you can take, put them up back up in the tree because winter's coming and, and there's a cycle of emptiness and that's all you do is go, go get food, take it, eat the food, go get food, take it, eat the food. And, and that's all the hope. The squirrel, thing about a squirrel doesn't have any hope for tomorrow. He's just up and down that tree, gathering nuts, eating nuts, gathering nuts, eats, uh, eating nuts. Now they have babies and they do certain things. They make a lot of cars have wrecks running off the road and, and all that. Man, that boy, that's so frustrating. They'll run out there and you think they're going to keep on going. They'll stop or they'll turn around and go off and then they'll run right back out in front of you and all that. But anyway, that's not in my notes, I promise you. <laughs> but I guess that's the only hope they have is hoping a car come by and some gullible driver that can run off the road. I don't know. But the world's very similar, no hope. They're just tuned up and in a system of, of getting the more and more, and then we cease. But the sad thing is you don't cease to exist. You cease to exist in this life on this earth, but there's a, there's a, there's a tomorrow. And the sun's coming up in the morning for the child of God. 
the fireplaces lighting up for those that are lost without, that will spend eternity in hell. Isn't that sad? But we see the things that are talked about and these things, the leading of the heart, the changing of the heart, and the, 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 the Bible talks in a place of he'd give us a new heart, put a new heart inside us, give us a new heart. Talks about a, uh, a surgery in the, in the heart area, not necessarily not in the, the muscle that pumps, but the, uh, that surgery not done with hands, but that spiritual surgery the Bible talks about that takes place when we get saved, the cutting asunder of the flesh and soul and spirit and so forth and, and, and such. But we talk about this heart ought to be a holy heart. Uh, in, in those places, says, in, uh, whosoever commanded, commits sin transgresseth also the law for the sins of transgression of the law. In verse 3, before that, was verse 4, verse 3 says, And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. And, and this is the sons of God. We ought to have a desire to have a holy heart. We ought to have a happy heart. And the joy that I preached about Wednesday night, last Wednesday night. Sometimes we have a heavy heart. We ought to have a heavy heart. Now we do because of a lot of other things, but the heaviness of heart I'm speaking of is a heart of heaviness for those around us that are, that are lost and without Christ and don't have the hope that we have. They're not the sons of God. They're technically, I mean, biblically speaking, they're the sons of the devil until they become sons of God. Even though they may not follow after, may not even believe in the devil, they still are in his clutches and in his grips and they'll spend eternity with him unless they repent and turn to Jesus Christ. So their heart, the sons of God, our hearts are different. The sons of God, our hunger ought to be different than the things we're looking after. It says, and every man that hath this hope in him purify himself. Why would purify ourselves? Because we have a desire to be pleased. We have a, a hunger in our, in, our, in our being, in our new heart to, to be pleasing to the Lord. We ought to have, ought to have a, a hunger to think like him. And the first point on that, the hunger to think right. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Doesn't say whose eyes is stayed on thee. It says whose mind is it stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Our, to talk right. We ought to have a hunger to talk right. Talk the things of the world, I mean of the, of the Lord and spiritual things. Talk about things above. Talk about things with eternal value. It says, O generation of vipers, how can ye be in the evil speak, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. When you use that kind of in a reverse sense, look at that verse, it's, how can the lost, uh, uh, how can they speak, being having an evil heart, how can they speak the Lord's language? Reminds me of Psalm 137, that is, with, I think it is, where they were on the, uh, they said they hung their harps in the willows, and, and, they, and the Babylonian captives asked the Israelites, well, play us, get your harp down and plug it in that amplifier over there and, and play us some good, good songs of y'all's God. And, and they hung their, heart, their heads and said, they didn't really plug them in. But they, they hung their heads and said, hey, man, how can we play the Lord's tune in the devil's world? That's not, go read it in Psalm 137, go read it. It's not the way it's worded there, but how, how can we play it, man? We're, we're, how, how would they enjoy it? How would they even know what we're talking about? And I talked about this morning how, how it's sad that the world has gotten very religious and the church has gotten very worldly, but the language that they use, the world, man, boy, they use all kind of good religious sign of language and everything, and it's so sad. It's so sad. Yeah, we're praying for you. Yeah, and you're all, all kind of little old Christian lingo they use, and there's no meat to that without Jesus in the heart, without being the sons of God, being born again. But to think right, to talk right, to toil right our works and our labors, uh, you should know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? And surely not. Get grapes from grape vines and figs from fig trees. Not from the briars and the thistles. That our toil and our work ought to be right. It ought to be heavenly focused and heavenly centered and uh, with heavenly purpose. Even uh, trash uh, man, we used to call them trash man. I'm sure they have a better title from that. And actually, now that's a pretty good job, by the way. They make pretty good money and have pretty good benefit package and all that. I wouldn't mind driving a trash truck nowadays. It ain't so bad. But I remember when I was a little boy, man, there's two of them rolled on the back of the truck and they'd stop. Tr truck stop. They'd walk to the backyard. They'd fight my bulldog and they'd get them on metal cans, walk all the way out the road and dump them in there and go back and put them back. And man, that dog hated, hated trash men. 
But trash truck ain't such a bad thing. But my whole point now, whether you be a man that collects waste from other people's homes or whether you be a, a multimillionaire banking high-ranking officer, Whatever we do, we ought to do for the glory of God and realize that every day, whatever we do, whatever we do until our, to our masters, we ought to do it as unto the Lord, hadn't we? And our labors, our toils are right. We ought, ought to be the same. And um, Well, anyway, let me move on. Their, their hearts are changed. Their hunger is different. Their help. And that's where it got, well, I'm not saying the message got good, but that's where it turned to a, a little bit better direction this morning. The sons of God are help. Man, we're people that have unlimited help. We got, I want to say, unlimited resources, unlimited help, unlimited joy, unlimited full salvation, joy unspeakable. I mean, we've got, man, we've got some good help on our side, don't we? I read that in Psalm 121. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven, the heavens and the earth. It's a sweet help. And I read that verse, first, first, first Thessalonians 4, 18. Wherefore cometh one another, I mean comfort one another with these words. And the end of that passage about getting out of here. And, and uh, man, I, when I was young, I didn't really get the, just that. I probably read through that most of the time. But as I get more years behind me than I have ahead of me now, on this side anyway, I, I, I think about that. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. And I, I, I probably have told you this before, but I was visiting a man uh, I'll tell you his name in a minute, Stokes. Uh, I'll tell you his name in just a minute, built houses. Prentice Stokes. I won't say Malcolm Stokes, but Prentice Stokes. I was visiting him in the hospital, and man, he was in a bad kind of way and not didn't have much time left to go. And and I, man, I don't know what I didn't know what to tell him. I didn't know what to exactly say or anything. I just leaned over his ear and, and probably hugged him a little bit, just a just a wonderful man, and I, and said, Jesus is coming soon. And man, that was a true statement. He's coming soon for us, but for that man, he was coming really, really soon, coming to catch him away, take him on out of here. The death angel carried him, wasn't long after that, carried him on to be in glory. Got a sweet help, a strengthening help. And we talked about Acts 1 8, the Holy, talking about when the Holy Spirit power would fall on the church and then power the church and the indwelling Holy Spirit, but you shall receive power. Boy, we've got a great, powerful help inside us, the power of the Holy Spirit. When we'll lean on him, I mean, he's there and to help. But oftentimes we get to that crossroads of pride or God and we decide we'll fix it, we'll do it, we'll run it on our own rather than flip it over in God pilot and let, let God be the pilot. Uh, you know, as a, a, a high-ranking fellow, and I don't want to even say his name, I don't remember his name right now, but a book written, and if you go to the base out there, you'll see the things out there about God as my co-pilot. And I want to separate, because I believe that fellow probably meant that good, and thank the Lord for that man's service to our nation. So I want to separate that. But I want to say right quick, it's a dangerous thinking that God's our co-pilot. God needs to be our pilot. We're sitting over in that other chair over there. He, he needs to be the pilot. I promise when we take controls and we, we start, I look like I knew what I'm doing there. I didn't know that. When we start doing that, it's when we're going to make a mess of, the, of this life. But a, a sweet help, a strength and help. But, but you know, we've got a help that, uh, uh, you know, I, I was thinking, I was telling somebody about this the other day, but this fellow, I was at a, a shop I worked at years ago, and one of the executives from upstairs was downstairs, and and uh, we were sitting there talking. We had one of those spring-loaded doors like we got in back, those with the little cl strong industrial closers on it, going into the office. And he was sitting there. I was helping him. I was had my foot in front of the door and was talking to him. He was kind of halfway. It was like he was fixing to leave, and I was fixing to get back to work, and, and I was fixing to. Uh, anyway, I, I assumed that he was already fixing to step out, and I was helping him holding that door open with my foot. And about that time, he had on a brand-new pair of glasses, and about the time I, I, I was thought, I just assumed he was fitting to turn around and I moved my foot out in front of that door and that thing slapped him in the face, cut his face, broke his brand new glasses. And oh man, I, I wasn't very good help that day. And uh, probably been a lot of other times I was supposed to have been helping somebody and maybe uh, let the wrench go and their, the other wrench come around and hit them or something. I don't know, probably a lot of other times. That, but our help can fail is what I'm trying to say. We're trying to help somebody, but well, we got a sure help. 
in whom we have trusted, yet uh, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Boy, it's a sure help, and it? He's, he's sure. It was sealed, and we're, it's rock solid. Talk about a hindrance is the sons of God, us as God's children. Now, this is a whole, could be a whole message in itself. I'm really not going to spend a lot of time on it. But there's three hindrances we all have. And a lot of times, we, I'm going to start with what we might think is the worst one. We blame it on the devil. Y'all remember Flip Wilson? The devil made me do it. The devil made me do it. But we do that a lot of times. We say, yeah, the devil made me do this. or let No, the devil didn't do it. The devil cannot, as a child of God, the devil cannot make you do anything. And though it goes back to it, we sin because we choose to sin. But he will inflict us any way he can. He will use anybody that will allow him to use them to cross us up, to hinder us. I'm talking about hindrances. A heart, a hunger, a help, or hindrances. He'll do anything he can to beset us. He'll throw fiery darts. He's got many wiles. He'll do everything he can to hinder us. And then there's society. Not only Satan, but society. And that's in the Bible, this present evil world mentioned in a place. But a lot of reference made in the Bible talking about things. And Apostle Paul over in 2 Timothy, we talked about this day, know also ye that the perilous times shall come. And names all these things that the lost and dying world's doing. But we ain't got to fall into it. But it's there. It's wickedness on every corner. Uh, drugs galore. Alcohol galore. I remember when you went to the grocery store to buy groceries. Now half the store is a liquor store. I know it ain't liquor, but it's all the same thing. But I mean, one of them, I'm sure they're all that way. But man, they got, it wasn't good enough to have an aisle of it. They got a whole section of it. Then they got, some of them got a bar in there. Some of them got a place you can go over and get you a lottie toddy or toddy dotty or whatever you want to call it while you go grocery shopping. Man, folks already can't drive them stupid little cart things. <laughs> but society, it's, it's set to trip you up in every way it can. Us as the sons of God. It ain't, it's not running in our favor. It's not running in our direction. A lot more could be said about that and uh, how society has twisted the minds of our young people, has twisted them every day in government schools, courses on gender choice and all that kind of stuff. Yes, right here in Crawford County, Georgia. Yeah. It's okay. Let them choose. Do what they want to. Don't make fun of them. Be gentle about it. Don't know. I know the majority of people in Crawford County don't go for that hogwash. But for some reason, they'll listen to what comes out of Washington. Flows down, trickles down through the Department of DEA, DAE, DEE, Department of Education. Do whatever they do, whatever material they put in their hands, and they'll do it. But I kid you not, there's a class in middle school right now. I may be wrong, it might have been high school. How old was he? High school? Yeah. Yeah. Middle. Was 15 from middle school of tolerance of transgenderism. Yep, right here in Crawford County. Of course, he's already got their favor. He's already told them that we come from monkeys and that, that uh, it all you know, started 21 billion trillion years ago and all turned into what we have now. And you know what that does? You can say what you want to, but all that does is does away with God. If, it, if two big old somethings run into one another and got so hot, they started all this stuff and uh, the little specks of dust landed here and grew arms and legs and started reading books. If, you, if all that could just happen out of the natural realm of things, we don't need a God. We can be our own gods. This world is not your friend. The society we live in is not your friend, I promise you. Not in tune with us and we ought not be in tune with it. But the hindrances. But you know what? I can say all I could about oh, Satan, our adversary, 
and all the powers he has and powers he does, but his limited power. I can say all I want to about society and all the woes of society that's so set and pitched against us. But you know what? The biggest battle I fight every day is not Satan or not society, but is me, yourself. And our self and our desire and our pride to do what we want to do. Oh, the old I syndrome. Um, I, 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 you know, I don't, <laughs> I start to say, I see it all the time, but I don't call it out. I, it wouldn't be proper and right to call it out. A lot of things that people do because they want to do it or because they don't want to do it. Regardless of what the excuse is, they do what people do it, they want to do. But before I call anybody else out, man, you know the thing about if you point to them, there's three fingers point back. Before I call out others, I have to sit there and think about, oh my, how many things do I do because I want to do rather than what the Lord would have me to do. Oh, if you want a preacher to stand up here and say he's perfect and y'all ain't, no, nah, you ain't got that fella. I, I had to get out of bed and fight with Jim this morning. I fought him three or four hours this morning before I ever got here, before I ever got in the pulpit and preached. But our hindrances, but seriously, the child of God. I was trying to think there's little uh, sayings about that. You know, if you're not facing the devil head on in your life, you must be going the same direction he is. Things like that and the thought of that. Uh, there's, there's a lot of spiritual truth to that picture there. But hindrances and certainly we have a lot of hindrances a lot of things fights and a lot of battles we fight and uh, a lot of battles with self for the lost man and for the world just to do what just do it nobody else can tell you what to do just do it there's no resistance no thought of against anything we do but I, I got a book that's got some got pretty good guidelines in of what I ought to do ought not do but bigger than that I got a Holy Spirit of God push not bigger than that but as well as that, I have a Holy Spirit of God dwelling in me that, that woos me when I head in the wrong way, in the wrong direction. Sometimes, man, you get in that fight, you get in that battle of you want to do what you want to do, and the Holy Spirit of God saying, no, that's not what you ought to do. I mean, that's a, that's a battle the world knows nothing about. Matter of fact, that's a battle a lot of Christians know nothing about because they're just so, so easy to just take and do what you want to do rather than what the Lord would have us to do. But we all fight that, and that's a hindrance. Oh, dual nature. The old man and the new man. Let's move on a little bit. Kind of, kind of the same lines a little bit. The hardness. Boy, we face some things as children of God, as sons of God. There's a hardness of service. Uh, 2 Timothy 2, 3, the Bible says, Thou therefore endure hardness, as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Now, a soldier, we'll talk about the battle and all that. I've kind of already talked about the battles, the spiritual battles we fight and the things we must take a stand. I, I don't know where it's going to go. You know, I've heard things uh, recently of all the uh, wickedness going on in our land and the things that's been accepted. And I don't know at what time do you take up, I don't want to say use the word take up arms here, but... Uh, but at what point and what, at, where, at what level are we proper to stand and fight for things? I mean, the babies that's murdered in this country every day. The doing away with right and wrong, the, the transgenderism and all that. and the, the, Not only the fact that, that a seventh grader may be confused about it, but to a school board that says, well, it's okay. But to the parents that, in, that oh, and that goes on in Crawford County too. I know it firsthand very well of parents that just back it and it's okay and they support all that stuff rather than giving little Johnny a dump truck and say go out in the yard and play with the truck or giving little Susie a baby doll here say go pretend and go feed that baby doll boy you, you realize how politically incorrect that is nowadays I played with baby dolls when I was a little boy I had three older sisters I'd tear their heads off of them and they could drive dump trucks little Tonka trucks <laughs> Everything. I wasn't that hard on them, though. I mean, I, if I was going to play, I had to play with them. I'd help them. They'd make clothes. They'd get cloth out and scissors and thread, and they'd sew out little stuff and try to make some baby doll clothes. I'd, I'd made them some tacky little clothes. Boy, I could sew a little piece of cloth together. My, my grandma, I watched her sewing up. I could sew two things together, but it probably didn't fit them Barbie dolls too good. 
but there's a hardness of service. Um, you know, we had to put an effort to get up this morning to come to church, particularly those of you with children. <laughs> I see a smile or two in the building. Uh, oh, I know it's like when you got eight shoes you got to find to go to church. And, you know, I know we give the devil more credit than we should, but I really believe the devil can come in your house and hide a shoe. <laughs> he ain't got to hide four of them. All he's got to hide is one of them. Okay, you don't, you don't have little children in your house, don't have that, but the devil can hide these things too. But it takes some effort to serve God. It takes some effort to be at the house of God. It takes some effort to be at whatever we have or do or whatever, it, not only just being here or, uh, man, to, to tell another person about Christ, to, to, you know, to bring up, to shift the conversation, how good those smoked ribs look that I referred to this morning, how good that, uh, that smoked barbecue looks and how good them smoked chicken wings look, to shift the effort to figure out a way to, to get from that to a spiritual realm person next to talking to the person next to you. Oh, you can do it. You can be quite crafty. And you ain't got to say, you know, these things spent the night in a fire. If you don't get saved, you're going to spend the rest of your life in fire. You ain't got to be quite that direct with it. <laughs> but there's ways that we can get around and tell them about Christ. Or, you know, uh, we, it's the first time you've been in a store where you live close by. By the way, we go to Hartson Baptist Church. Just right up there, turn left. Well, from there you turn, yeah, turn left right before you get to Dollar Tree and Go out about three or four miles on the right, and we'd love to have you visit with us Sunday. That may open a door to talk about more things. But I'm just trying to say there's a hardness of service. Sometimes flesh don't want to. The world don't want to. Your own family probably don't want you to be faithful and to keep on serving. Just keep on keeping on. They don't understand why you don't just take off Sunday go to every family union that's always on Sunday. They don't understand why you don't participate in all the devil's holidays, why you don't do this, why you do that. And they don't understand all those things. But, man, the sons of God, we're, we're, we're set different. We're headed in a different direction. We ought to live different. We ought to be, right, be different. There's a hardness to service. There's a hardness to sin for a child of God. Lost folks can just carry on with it. Now, the, make, please know the, the statement is always true, and I know it's a great big huge statement that the wages of sin is death. And I know ultimately sin separates from a holy and righteous God, and there's a need of salvation. But the fact is, sin brings about death regardless. And I'm not talking about spiritual death or eternal death. But sin causes problems, death of our testimony, death of our church, death of our home, death of our family. It br sin brings about problem. Proverbs 13, 15, good understanding giveth favor, but the way of transgressors is hard. Let me say this, for a child of God, Baxter, I text it, he talked about in verse 14, whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is a transgression of the law. And you and I are just as capable of sinning today as we were before we ever got saved. But the problem is it comes with a price. It comes with a hardness. It comes with the Holy Spirit of God. If you're saved, wooing you to know that that wasn't right what you did, that you ought to repent of it in 1 John 1, 9 it. But it causes problems. And it's so sad to watch Christians get into sin and sin eat their lives Eat their homes, eat their children, eat their families, eat the church. And sin's hard. And for a child of God, for the devil's crowd, well, I mean, they're lost. You can't be loster than lost. And it's just the normal life they live. Even though the, the plowing of the wicked is but sin, I think I, that's part of a verse kind of by some down them lines, but they're lost. That's their realm they live in and they dwell in. That's the eternal realm unless they get saved, unless they come to a place of repentance. They're, they're, they're in their dogs bark because they're dogs. It's what they naturally do. Sin or sin. And it goes right with their flow, but for the child of God, for the son of God that we're preaching about, sin ought to be hard. It is hard. And we get to a place where it's not hard, it's going to be harder. It's going to cause greater problems. And that's the problem with it. Get used to it and accept it and think, well, we're getting by with it. As God's children, we think we're running in a closet like these children and get a cookie. And I, I never had that problem. I never run no closet and eat a cookie. I just eat that thing. But, but seriously, though, we, we as children, I mean, we as children of God, we, 
uh, get like, almost like a child, you know, you run and get the cookie out of the cookie jar. And, you know, I can't say that. It wasn't really true because sometimes there might be some cookies or something on that counter. And I slip around over around by the coffee bar and I go around and eat that coffee bar where she's going to watch TV. She don't see me eat that chocolate chip cookie. Say, Jim, you're supposed to be on a diet. What are you talking about? <laughs> but the hardness of sin, it's, 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 I think I just called another man, look at his wife smiling like he might be guilty of the same thing. <laughs> I'm assuming that. I'm just assuming that. The hardness of sin. The way of transgressors is hard. And, you know, in the battle, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's great being a Christian. I love to be S-A-V-E-D, and it's wonderful being a C-H-R-I-S-T, you know, all those songs and all the children's songs. They're good and all that, and I get that, but at the same time, there's a battle that we step into we get saved that there's lost people didn't have. But I know it's worth it. And, and part of it is that we want to be pleasing to our Heavenly Father. We're talking about sons of God. Uh, man, I remember when I would, uh, as a child and even as an adult, you didn't want your parents to find out you'd done things wrong or done, went down bad roads or made bad decisions. You wanted to tell them, hey, Daddy, I, I did such and such. Or I, you know, I got a job doing this or doing this. You didn't want to tell them, you know, I have to call them and tell them the trouble you'd been in or bad decisions you made that caused difficulty. And for the child of God, we want to be pleasing to our Father. And there's a hardness of sin. And for the child of God, there's also that hardness of sons of God. There's a hardness of suffering. 2 Corinthians 11.30 If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. Put your uh, if you don't have your ribbon there on 1 John 3, put it there. You're just going to go back a couple of pages. Go back to 1 Peter chapter 4. In 1 Peter, a good portion of the book is dealing with suffering. But 1 Peter chapter 4, starting verse 12, says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. Wow. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. And see, it's our portion, it's our part. We're going to suffer for the name of Christ. Now, a lot of times it's contingent on how faithful we are, how service we are, I mean, how service we are, uh, how, how much we serve the Lord, how much we live for Him, how separated we might live our lives and all, but the closer you are to the Lord, the more you're going to suffer for it in this world. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, verse 15, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on his behalf. But meaning it's, boy, when we suffer for the name of Christ, for the cause of Christ, I think back to the martyrs that were burned at the stake because they stood for truth. They stood for sometimes salvation by grace and faith, through faith, not by works. And they'd hold on to truths such as that, just plain, simple Bible truths that a big Roman church was denying that would have them work and play penance and do all those things. But they stood and declared that in a, in a lot of other subjects of standing for Bible truth. They'd be literally put in a place where they'd pile up brush and wood and all around their feet and tie them to a post and light those fires. If you read books about martyrs and all, you'll read through and see where, where they would be praising God and worshiping as the fires lit up around their bodies and they glowed. They'd be up until they could, didn't have breath to speak with anymore. They'd be praising God and lifting up his name. Boy, I'd like to think I'd have half enough faith to do that. 
but they were suffering for the cause of Christ. Christ was glorified in it. He's eternally glorified for that. And you say, well, how is he glorifying that? Well, at the heart of the matter, the fact is, as the world and lost folks was working on, uh, working around and lighting those fires, that person was sliding right on into the face of glory, Jesus Christ, right on in his immediate presence that day. But the truth stands and the truth goes on and and God's glorified it, and we still have truth, as this book was the subject did a lot of that, and stands for the truth of this book, and, and this particular book, as a matter of fact, a lot of things having to do with it. But there's a hardness of suffering. Go back with me to, and it's our lot. It's just part of it. It would be so easy, just don't stand for anything, but it wouldn't be pleasing to our Lord. The Lord would have us to stand for some things, to take a stand, and we do, it'll cost us. A very dear person in my life worked a job making products he wasn't pleased with, but it paid good money. He worked there for several years. They wanted him to go and march for the rights of the product they made. He didn't feel at peace with it. He's walking with it and does very much so today, very faithful in his church. But he had a hard time going for marching for the rights of something that he knew was sinful and causing damage to people. And he couldn't take it any longer. He got tired of it. He, he couldn't take it. The, the back, I mean, that's been 25, 30 years ago, ever how long it's been ago. And back at that time, it was probably making $56,000 a year. But he couldn't take it anymore. And he left. Walked away from every bit of it. Didn't know that in about two years the place was shut down and he'd be given an early opportunity to retire or an opportunity to transfer to another place, which he wouldn't have taken the transfer because he already didn't like making that product already. So it'd be easy to say, boy, he just messed up, didn't he? No, he didn't. God's blessed him. He's probably making three or four times out of months now. And a lot of it has to do with Christian investments and Christians learning how to manage their money and uh, being blessed to the Lord in their investment and, and seeing God bless what they do and how they give and, and are more faithful in their churches and faithful in missions. And, he, and the Lord just blessed him tremendously in that and a lot of other areas. But I believe a lot of it goes back that he took a stand and he did what everybody thought was crazy and walked away from that kind of money back that many years ago. Walked away and said, I can't make my living making the devil's product. And got away from it, left it. You better believe that was a hard thing for him to walk through the end. A lot of people criticize him. Said, man, you lost your mind. The sons of God. The hardness. Oh my, but there's the hope. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. In our text in 1 John chapter 2, go back just a few verses before we started. Uh, by the way, these chapter numbers were not in the originals. That's, we just, they were put in by man for ease of division just to find where we're located and find where we're at where we could say turn to such and such rather than, you know, a uh, can you imagine if I got up here and said, okay, and their villages were Etam and Ain, Enum, and boy, why'd I find a place to start reading all them names? Okay, y'all know where I'm at. Y'all turn there. It's a lot easier if I said turn to 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 20 and 32. So they're not, no, the chapters and all aren't God inspired, but they sure make it a lot easier to find a place in the Bible, don't they? Make it easy to remember verses. But right before we started in 1 John chapter 3, Go down to 1 John chapter 2, verse 25. Let's read 24. It says, let, let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he hath promised us even eternal life. And there's our hope. It's a promise. Our hope is built on the promises of God. Brother Maynard 
I was looking through some notes just early this morning and found two little three by five index cards where he preached revival. I don't know what, yeah, I didn't write the dates on them, but uh, where I got a little out, like wrote, jotted down the outlines where he preached, he got them. I started taking a picture of them and sent them to Sister Burita this morning, encourage her with them. And I thought, man, she would never be able to read that chicken scratch, so I'm not going to send it to her, but I will probably refer tell her that I've got, I've got a pile of stuff from him and where he's impacting my life. And even hopefully on my hard drive on my computer, got a pile of messages he preached. But anyway, he preached much about the promises of God. And he said, if God fails me this time, it'll be the first time. You've heard me say that. And that was brought up at his funeral service that he, he said that all over this country and in several places around the world. If he fails me this time, it'll be the first time. God's a God that keeps his promise. He's always faithful. And we have a great hope in that in the promises of God. It's all bound up by the word. He's not going to break his word. He's truth. God cannot lie. He, he is truth. He's the, he's the person of truth. He is truth. He's not going to lie. He's not going to forget what he said. He's not going to change his mind. It's solid. The promises of God are there. And our hope is based on that. Verse 3, and every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure, the, he, the second he being Jesus Christ. He's pure. We ought to be pure. We ought to have desire to be. Why? Well, we've got that hope inside us. We want to be pleased our Father. We're heaven bound. We want to be cleaned up. We want to be uh, all we can for our Heavenly Father. But our hope is in a promise. Our hope is in a place. We just sang about it. What a day that'll be. In that song, though, you don't so much, we go, go to the third point under this point, because you don't so much talk about heaven and the splendors of heaven and all those things, because when it's all said and done, the splendors of heaven, the splendors of heaven aren't really what's going to matter. It's going to be the splendor of heaven. There's hope. Our hope's in promises. Our hope's in a place, but ultimately our hope's in the what a day to be when my Jesus, I see my Savior, I shall see in a person, Jesus Christ. And that goes on, that hope is all it's laid up, it's for sure, it's solid, it's settled, uh, settled on firm foundations, everything we say is based on the Word of God, the truth of the Word of God, our hope, that blessed hope that He's coming. Hey, He's coming, He's going to catch us. We're going to take us out of here uh, by the death of the rapture. We're moving yonder. We're going to spend all eternity with Him. That'll put a smile on our face. That'll make, that'll make a Presbyterian say amen. <laughs> but ultimately, in, in the course, if you, got it, if you say all that, and lastly in their home in Revelation 21 and 22, not going to go there. But the home, our eternal home, this ain't our home. All the things I talked about, this world, this earth, and the systems, and all the wickedness all going on, this ain't home. And that's where we get messed up. We get thinking about this is what we're stuck with. We're not stuck here. We have an opportunity to be here and all the blessings that go with it with a few snags and thorns along the way. We've got an amazing Savior that's going to prepare a place. And we're moving yonder. Gonna be far better. More than I got words and vocabulary and articulation and all that kind of fancy stuff, I can't describe it. I can sure imagine it, but I bet what I imagine comes short comes far short of the glory of God and the glory that we'll spend our eternity with. Sure is good to be part of the family of God, ain't it? Be sons of God. And I, uh, you know, I know that I was thinking about that through that several times through this morning and night, thinking about that as where we're living. There's some people probably have a problem with the Bible saying sons of God. Why don't we say daughters of God? Well, it's just in general. Us to say the authority through the Bible has generally been uh, uh, male gendered and, and, ha and, and, and spoken of in that way. And there's versions that take all that out, by the way. But don't be offended that, ladies, you're included in that grace of God, I promise you. Just a gentle way of speaking. God ain't a they and them God. Let me make that real clear. He ain't a they and them God. He's a whosoever will God. I'm glad I'm a child of God, aren't you? Are you a child of God? 
You know that you know that you know. If you died right now, you'd go to heaven. I'm not going to call you out. I wouldn't do that. But if I were to ask you your testimony of you trusting Christ and your assurance and biblical truth to back why you know you're going to heaven, do you have a story to tell tonight? Maybe you're struggling with something that I hadn't come within a thousand miles of this morning or tonight. What do you need to do? If you would, just come up and just play through a verse or something. And uh, I, I don't know how the Lord may have worked in your heart. Um, but if you need to just talk to the Lord, do business with the Lord or something. I, I know that everybody's not physically able to come to the front. And uh, I understand that. God knows that. But if you need to come to the altar or you need to use that altar right there, whatever you need to do, uh, take care of that. And Father, I pray that you every way in this Time, short time of invitation, Lord. I pray that you work in our hearts, God, that we desire to please you. God, I'm thankful that I'm your child because of what you did that I might be. God, I'm thankful for all that goes with it. Lord, that one day I get to leave this whole place and the sin of it behind, spend eternity with you. Lord, I pray and hope that everyone here has that hope and assurance. God, also that we'd have a desire to walk close with you, to represent you better in our remaining time on this old earth. God, we love you and thank you for all. In Jesus' name, amen. Appreciate your attention today. It's been good to be in God's house. Good to be with you today. Uh, wrap up. Wrap up your pipes. It's going to be cold. It's supposed to get down. I, one, one hour they'll say 21, 22. The next hour they'll say 17, 18. Uh, Miss Jimmy was telling me that Miss Faye told her today it's single digits in not North Texas, but Central Texas was in single digits today. And that same thing's kind of headed here. So it's going to be cold. Tomorrow's supposed to be pretty decent. Tuesday, Wednesday, it's supposed to be colder. And then we've got several freezing nights on and off for about the next week or two. But it's winter. That's what it's supposed to do. But them teens hurt. And last year, them teens cost us a lot. Uh, we're, gonna have to, we're, gonna, we're not going to cut the water off this year. We're going to leave it running. At least some pipes running. But we do need to, um, well, I'll, I'll probably just do that because I don't know how to ask to get it done. But we've got to wrap those pipes coming out of the back of the, building out yonder where they undid them last year when they worked on the well and they froze and everything. But uh, anyway, that's, let's be dismissed in a word of prayer. Stay warm this week. Leave your water running. Leave your spouts open. Tell others about Jesus. Leave your big spout open where get more in there. To, the living waters, you know, they're supposed to flow in us and out of us. So don't shut the in pipe off. Don't shut the out pipe off. Wrap up your pipes. I guess that's the message that might preach, hasn't it? <laughs> Father, we love you. God, thank you for your goodness. Lord, I thank you for the, the flock here, the congregation, the people, Lord. Lord, I know everybody's not here tonight. But Lord, I thank you for Hardison Baptist Church. I pray that you'd help us, God, to use us, that you'd give us direction, Lord, that we would follow you in that direction. Lord, I pray that you'd people, keep our people warm this week. Lord, God, we thank you for homes and electricity and gas and fires and heaters and things and all the things that we have that so many in the world don't have. But God, we thank you for it. I pray that you'd help us through the week, keep us safe. Lord, I pray that you'd give us opportunities to tell others about you. God, we love you. Thank you for all. We thank you most of all for dying for us and loving us first. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Shake hands with one another and you're dismissed.